Mr. Zaka, I just wanted to follow a little bit on the um, repeated suggestions that you've made in your testimony that the cybersecurity vulnerabilities um, will expose the United States to risk and to uh, attacks and that Twitter security failures threaten the country's national security. Good with that? Yes, sir. Okay. So I get um, hidden ad buyers. We saw the same thing with Facebook when they were taking ads with the payments denominated in rubles and not bothering to figure out that there might have been Russians behind those ads. Um, and you've mentioned concerns about hidden Chinese ad buyers. Um, but if we could talk a little bit more about the national security risk associated with, for instance, the unregistered Saudi foreign agent who worked at Twitter or the pressure uh, to hire Indian government agents Walk us through a scenario of how an individual planted in Twitter like that could create a national security risk for the United States. And if you would make particular reference to the fact that, at least when I use Twitter, I'm sending stuff out. It's intended to be public. So how in that environment can uh, a foreign agent create national security risk of any significant nature? Yes, sir. Um, there are several uh, aspects to that. Um, there's the non-public information that we have spoken about earlier today, your location, um, your phone number, your email address, things that aren't advertised to the world. Uh, in fact, I believe 200 million uh, we want to say regular users, not necessarily from a national security standpoint. Twitter in 2020 uh, internally assessed that they lost information on 200 million users for email addresses, phone numbers, other information like that. Um, this is the information that you need in order to start taking over other people's accounts. With your phone number uh, and an email address, I can hijack your phone number. I can then change your Gmail, your Coinbase, your Ameritrade, your other accounts, I can cause financial harm that way. I can then assume your identity. But more importantly, um, I probably want to be able to understand your whereabouts, um, your network, uh, and understand, well, I'll give you an example in foreign governments, uh, a concern, and then we can apply that to the United States. Uh, there were requests for information about members in uh, the farmers, uh, uh, the farmers protest, uh, there might be organizations or groups in the United States where, once I know your home address and your home phone number, I can approach you in real life. I can put pressure on you. I could possibly recruit you. You could be a witting or unwitting uh, accomplice, and then I could influence you or target you for, for influence operations in the real world. Let me just offer the thought that my home address and phone number and email address are pretty widely known um, and indeed in the public domain. So how does Twitter access to that information? Is there more or what's the difference between being able to look me up in the phone book um, and having Twitter access to that information? Having, having uh, uh, been uh, uh, in the public sector uh, myself, yes, uh, a lot of my information uh, became known. Um, there's also uh, a lot of people who are in particular roles where that information is not known. And the targeting uh, of them, perhaps staffers, perhaps aides, perhaps uh, people around you uh, influencing to build that network, which we have seen within, uh, not, uh, not Twitter, but which the U.S. and the intelligence communities have seen as part of uh, the great game in the intelligence communities and world. Okay, so just play that out for me a little bit more, given that um, so much of this information is available through other channels. Um, what would the end game be for, let's say, a foreign government seeking to um, put that kind of pressure on somebody who could make a, presumably make a difference or a decision about, um, to the benefit of the foreign country? Perhaps identifying a relative, a family member, a colleague who is in financial issues or has other 
um, elements that can be leveraged against them uh, to uh, help them influence you in a particular uh, fashion without your awareness. So you're able to, somebody would be able to um, create a sort of a family or personal network around an individual Twitter user and extract information about folks in that network? That is one particular uh, aspect that intelligence communities are, and are how would that to do. How would that take place through the, if somebody's gotten into the Twitter system, how do they find that out? Well, it might be used in combination with other uh, data collection sources. For instance, one of the concerns of U.S. Uh, people traveling to other uh, countries is, was there information in the OPM database? And can that information be cross-indexed against the healthcare industry databases that have been lost? Uh, do we know that this person has a particular, particular political bias on Twitter and start to tie all of these things together for people of influence uh, or access within governments or within sensitive positions? Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.